external static pressure is one of the most confusing measurements because you have to consider how the equipment, how the manufacturer has rated it. So like with a gas furnace, the only thing that the manufacturers rate from the factory with that piece of equipment is the blower inside, and we'll just say a condensing furnace, which is gonna have a secondary heat exchanger and a heat exchanger. Those are internal components. Anything else is external. So you have to account for that with the measurements. So that's why with a gas furnace, anytime that we measure external static pressure, we're measuring after the filter where the air enters the equipment and then before the coil where the air exits the equipment. So we're trying to consider the total resistance that that blower has to work against. And you had mentioned before as well, some of the equipment, some of the equipment's rated with a filter and some of it's not, you have to know the difference. Yeah, that's where it gets goofy. And that's on air handlers and package units. Gas furnaces are pretty straightforward. Air handlers and package units, and they can get really confusing. This is one of the reasons why you want to look in the manufacturer's technical literature, their specifications, for the footnotes in their fan tables. They'll tell you how the equipment was rated, whether it was weighted with a filter, rated the coil wet, the coil dry. These can all make a difference. And when you're dealing with package units and air handlers, the biggest variable is going to be the coil, because that coil is for single piece air handlers, it's an internal pressure drop. And as that coil starts to load up with dirt, number one, you need to find out why. But number two, it's going to change your external static pressure measurements because where it's an internal pressure drop, it's hidden from that measurement. So for those of you that are doing startups on equipment, you'll want to get a pressure drop measurement across the indoor coil on startup and document it somewhere on the air handler or package unit. And you'll also want to note the condition of that coil. Was it wet or was it dry? Because as that pressure drop, if it continues to go up over the years, as you go back and service it, that's going to tell you that air is bypassing that filter. And that's a completely different problem, but it'll show up as coil pressure drop. That was one of the easiest ways we got our guys to measure it was instead of having to tear the equipment apart and take all the panels apart and then visually inspect the coil, they could take two pressure measurements and tell pretty quick if that coil was dirty or not. So testing should not equal more work it should equal making your work easier and faster. So blower speeds vary widely these days. Like back in the day, you had one speed on and off. So when you're going to check stuff, I don't know if this might be just like a public service announcement. You, you kind of have to make sure that you're actually in the speed that you're testing because they can change speeds. There's multi-stage equipment. There's fan only speed. Because I was thinking to myself, we, we could just put it in fan only and you don't have to worry about calculating what the wet coil would be. But the fan only speed might be 100 CFM per ton or something like that. Yep. You got to test it at the highest airflow that that system will see. That's a great point, Zach. The other thing is if a it's a variable speed fan, if it's ramping up, you got to allow it to go through its total ramping profile. And they can be long. <laughs> I remember uh, um, Goodman units, as I recall, they had multiple ramping profiles you could choose from for their, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think it's AVPTC air handler, the communicating air handler. You could pick one of four different uh, ramping profiles, A, B, C, or D. Trains uh, dehumidifying ramping profile was like 70% for like seven or eight minutes. So yeah. you, you had to wait a while so it, it might be kind of uh uh necessary necessary to read the manual i don't know how how that sounds pretty common right there to read the manual and see what kind of profile it is because you may you might wait for five minutes all right we're good but there's three or four more minutes to go <laughs> yeah and one of the things that we had found on older installations that we'd done was we we'd hook them up turn them on and we're out the door we didn't check this stuff and then we'd go back and we would have five ton you know, furnaces that had five ton drives on three ton outdoor units and defaults five ton for airflow. Mm, that's not a dehumidifying system. Screaming. <laughs> oh yeah. Air's coming from every part of it. You know, you still see stuff like that. Uh, that's what I always thought whenever they put together these systems, when it was going from 10 to 12 sear, that's the time frame I'm thinking about 10 to 12 and 12 to 13. They would oversize coils and air handlers and put them with 
condensers and you would change the whole uh, profile of how it dehumidified. And mm -hmm. then you would have air handlers that were set up to have CFM for, let's say, two and a half tons, and you had a two-ton outdoor unit. So if, if you weren't checking behind them, you'd be whistling Dixie through the grills because its standard CFM would have been 400 CFM per ton or 1,000 on this 800 CFM duct system you designed because it was two-ton outdoor unit. It's a problem we, we, we ran into a couple of times of our own doing. 